Because yeah, how much I'm laughing and reading YouTube comments. More it depends on my I self know. esteem. <laughs> <is good. laughs> He's searching right. for the national well, treasure. We're gonna not have time That's, for this. I have great news for Nuggets fans. Russell Westbrook joining the team after being kind of routed through Utah, who continued to not sign anybody and maybe trade yeah, their that, best player. So, uh, Westbrook to Denver, brew your reaction. Um, I, I don't hate it. Look, he's coming off the bench. If they were to start him, I'd be like, oh, my gosh, no. what are they doing? No, no, All no, right. no. But him coming off the bench and his ego. Now, remember, Nick, when he went to the Lakers, he was still – Russell Westbrook. You yeah, know, he like was coming off a great, great run player. with Washington. Great runs, but, but extreme. But no, he but played well there. Average yeah. triple-double, yeah. got him to the That's playoffs, you know. Yeah. So he was still thinking he's in his superstar phase. Now he clearly understands this is what I am now. I'm, ro- I'm winding down my career as a role player. It's just about winning. And so if I think he can go to the Nuggets, come off the bench, give him energy. All right, they need him. He can't replace KCP because he can't shoot, and that's what KCP does. And they needed I, more shooting. Yeah, they, they got to do more. They still need to get somebody that can can shoot. But off the bench, bringing energy, I don't. I, I think this is okay. Well, Just quickly for yeah, the please, bench, yeah. Denver bench in the regular season, which you were classic two, one and a half. Correct. Yeah, it was a full season. Yeah, you know what I mean. Correct. One uh, 30 points off the bench, the Denver's bench, 25th in the league, 44% field goal, 26th in the league. So, obviously, everything runs through Joker. Not a lot of depth. Kind of fell apart there. And in the playoffs, that 30 games, 30 points off the bench went down to 15 points off the bench. And that, by the way, happens to every team because your starters play more. And I know why was yesterday you told me I have to stop asking you questions on the air. No, you ask me questions, but when I give you answers, you can't be like, no. Like, Wiles, what's your opinion on this? (laughs) um, All right, well, this might be another one of those things. Uh, Russell Westbrook, even dating back to when he was a superstar, what time of year did he struggle the most? Where did he play his worst basketball? Playoffs. The playoffs. Good job, Bru. Thank you. I thought it was going to make 3 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's why I really don't understand, nor do I like this for Denver. Denver last year was 29th in the league in three-point volume. And I'm not saying they need to be the Celtics is from three-point volume. This doesn't help yeah. that. Denver Russ last year, was, so we know he, over the course of the season, he's not going to help your three-point shooting to begin with. Last year with the Clippers, or at any point really in his career post the 2015 playoffs, honestly, if we're going the, so for a decade, he has struggled massively come the postseason. And that is where even if he knows I'm not a superstar anymore, I think maybe he wants it so bad or so competitive. No, but he's had moments. Tries, he's had flashes. But – this year in the playoffs, he was awesome in game one, and then he was their worst player on their team. But they needed the, more for, the, from him because of the injuries. I, no, I, I get that. Like, but I, I don't think I, – I, I don't, just don't okay. think Russell Westbrook is, is wired at any point in his basketball life to just be a role player. Can I – can I about I, this? What was Denver's, besides three-point shooting, intangible – I'll go to the intangibles guy – what was the intangibles thing? I won't ask you. I'll just say it. The intangible thing that Denver needed? A little energy. A little en- energy, energy, a little yeah. intensity. They yes. would get apathetic. Yes. They would yep. watch big leads just fall away, or they would let leads get out of hand. Yep. Because And then Joker had to stay in. He couldn't go to the bench, and things got screwed up. Their now star Russ go player in. is a laid-back guy. Ah. All right. No, Jokic. You screaming yesterday. Yeah, but no, he gets into at times, but I mean, generally he's oh, calm and matched. cool. And I think <laughs> I think energy is something they need. Now, and uh, I also think this, Nick, if it's not working, yes, I don't think Michael think, Malone will go with. Like it's they get rid of it. No, that's it, this that, won't be the Lakers. That's you know, fine, but there is an like, element of work, we're a year trial. removed from winning the title. We're changing things up. We just lost KCP bringing Russell Westbrook, where I'm like, oh, I've seen that movie and it ended terrible. The weird thing is, too. LeBron obviously wanted Russ. Joker really wants Russ. It, it, so NBA about players lo- love like Russ. him a lot more than NBA players. You like do. energy. I'm, yeah. Energy is a skill. Jeff Van that? Gundy said that, and he's right. You know what I would like? Why Some were three you point shooting during my opening take. Set at nine and a half. And now, to their credit, Brew, 
The Cowboys have consistently over-delivered. Only the Cowboys and the Steelers have gone over their win total in each of the last three seasons. So do you expect the Cowboys to over or under-deliver this year? Okay, I'm going to say I think they're a 10-win, maybe 11-win team. So, so that over. technically would be over. Yeah. But I, I honestly, I'm viewing that as under because what? they've been – they've won, no, here's why. Because they've won their 12 games in each of the last three years. They are still S-Bob. I mean, Michael Parsons just said it the other day. Well, he said right? S-Bond, to be fair. But <laughs> so yes. my point is – even if you go over nine and a half wins, I don't care. I don't bet. All right. So well, I don't that's care. Kind of the ten of wins. It. Ten wins is taking a step backwards, and that's what I think they'll do. I don't think they're a nine. I think they're a ten win team. So that's so, over. But they will take a step back and not okay. be as good as they were last year. So listen, so that's what so actually that, makes so sense. You see what I'm saying? It, it makes yeah. sense, but it also you is, don't want to agree with no, me. But you know that, what? You don't I'm want, nuanced. I don't you, just think in black and white. I got nuance. You, up you here. don't want to say the Cowboys will overachieve, which is your answer. So you're finding a way to say no. them hitting the. the, the They've it, had the, a horrible. I, I the, really think. Under right. 12 wins is and not really a contender anymore is a step back. Okay, th- but so, but then I think, I guess you would agree then, if we f- rephrase this slightly, the market and the public has overreacted to how much of a step back they took. If the number's nine and a half and it's the most bet under, that means folks think this is going to be a nine-win team. You think that's an overreaction. You think that the Cowboys will still be a double-digit win team, but not they're not headed in the right direction. They're going the other direction. Right. I think that analysis is totally fair. I think that that is that I think this number, I think betting the Cowboys to go under 10 wins, I think is a dumb bet. I think, like most, it's hard I, I just, when they were the number one offense in football last year, the number five defense in football, they had the number two point differential. Brew focused all his attention on the tomato cans thing, which was yeah. a fun bit, but here's what's also true. Two teams in the NFC total, the Niners and the Eagles, had more wins against playoff teams than the Cowboys last year. Two total. This idea that there's a lot of teams that just beat a, a seven playoff teams over the course of the year, they don't. Every no, but team. The tomato gets, cans is more about the, margin of victory. Yeah, they were and all just that stomping. Stuff. They were, I, I, I get that. But the idea that they couldn't beat good teams, my point is they beat Philly, they beat the Rams, they beat Detroit. That's three wins over playoff teams. No one in the NFC, other than San Francisco and Philly, had more wins over playoff teams Somebody than in the Dallas AFC did. did that. The say it again. The Jets. Somebody the, in the AFC. The, the, okay, there they you go. They beat three playoff teams. The, 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 it's always it's, odd. Remember they, they beat praised. the Rams when the Rams the, weren't good. No, yeah. that's. But by the way, when they the beat Detroit, Philly, when hold on, it to them, Philly, hold on, hold on. Or, see, I but again, that's where Cowboys fans rightfully get mad at the media. The Rams didn't. Was Stafford out? No, no but they, they kind of turned it no, around later in the season. No, I think. People started acknowledging the Rams were good. The Rams didn't start one and seven and all of a sudden get hot. The Rams, people underrated, myself included, the beginning of the year, and then realized by the end of the year, oh, this is a good team. But because the Cowboys beat them at the beginning of the year, we were like, yeah. oh, that they were one of Brew's actual tomato cans, cans, if you the will. Rams, well, and they started slow. And I, I don't know that they. I, think I mean, they, the I, record was. I don't think wasn't they were very good. Okay, all right, they were. Dusty, the, were the Rams tomato cans? A hundred percent, and I made Brew take it off. <laughs> they were a hundred percent were a tomato can. They were. And then let me. Can I this ask? This is one the other, only tomato can. This. Yeah, this down here right now. I can't believe this is the only it. one that's Guys, down here right now. Started three and six, Dusty. The, the, We're looking get, for a tomato. Can I can I ask you a serious question? <laughs> I promise you, I'm on that like tomato that. can. Oh, that my, the Rams I'm sorry, were briefly a uh, tomato. They were on the tomato. Yes, can. Huh. yes, yes, yes. The, do you think they will be able to get from whomever their running back is this year, 59 yards? The Cowboys. Per, yes, 59 yards per game. Four yards per carry and a half dozen touchdowns. Do you think that they is should. okay? Combined, that, yeah. no, no, no. I don't know from their lead. From their lead, I don't know that they'll have a running back that averages fifty-nine yards a game. So, so the, I, the, I'm not the reason it. I'm saying this. That's what Tony Pollard gave them. So I understand that. I also thought them not adding a running back was a mistake, but I don't think it is. I don't think that they are losing 
an elite running back that they have to replace. They're losing. But they have. The, I, we don't even know if they have a competent running back. I, I, I'll go ahead. I'll go out on a limb and say they have a running back put up the equivalent to what Tony Pollard did last year. Uh, Dowdle's going to be the, as good as. I don't know who I, it'll I be. So. I, it might be a veteran who gets cut during camp and they add. I'm saying I think they'll have a running back that averages they four yards a carry, has a half dozen a touchdowns, and and around 60 